All right, welcome. Let's practice the ratio test. I'm going to do some ratio test problems. There will probably also be some interval and radius of convergence situations. And hold on, um, hang on. Get everything ready on my computer. Get to have it ready for start recording. Okay, we're going to determine whether the series converges or diverges using the ratio test. All right. So we're going to set up for the ratio test by saying, hey, I'm interested in the limit as n approaches infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of a n plus 1 to a n. Okay, I'm going to start every time with that when I do the ratio test. Okay. And this is going to be limit as n approaches infinity of e to the n plus 1. We start off by plugging in n plus 1 n plus 1 factorial, divided by, or I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of a n. So I'm going to take this and put it on top, and I'm going to take that and put it on bottom. Okay. Now I know what's going to happen here when I cancel stuff off. I'm going to lose all n powers down here, and I'll be left with the one extra power up top. And n factorial divided by n plus 1 factorial, well, n factorial is n plus 1 times n factorial, so I'm going to lose everything except for that n plus first term. So now I've got the limit as n approaches infinity of e over n plus 1's absolute value. As n approaches infinity, e stays the same. It's still between 2 and 3, and n plus 1 goes to infinity, so this fraction goes to 0. Then over here, ah, this is an interesting test. Okay, I kind of showed you in class that if it's n factorial divided by any number to the n, that's going to diverge. But is n to the 10th tacked onto the denominator enough to overcome this n factorial? I don't think it is, okay, but I don't exactly remember. So I'm going to do the ratio test, which is going to start by me announcing that I'm interested in taking the limit of the ratio of successive terms. Okay. That's going to be n plus 1 factorial divided by n plus 1 to the 10th okay, times 10 to the n plus 1 divided by the original terms. So that would be n factorial in the denominator, n to the 10 up here, and 10 to the n over there. So I'll start canceling stuff. 10 to the n plus 1 and 10 to the n. I know all but 1 will cancel. Okay, Can't really do anything with that because those don't have the same base as the exponent. Uh, but I can work with this n factorial and n plus 1 factorial. I'm just left with the n plus 1. All right. Now I'm going to go over here and kind of collect similar terms. Okay. I've got an n plus 1 on top. Yeah a 10 on bottom, I'm just leave those there, multiplied by n plus 1 to the 10th in the denominator, divided by n to the 10th over there. Now you can look at that uh, a couple of different ways. You can just say, OK, these are both 10th power and n, and so they're the limit of the ratio is going to be the ratio of the leading coefficients, which would be 1 divided by this will be 1. I expand that out 10 times. Or you can apply an exponent property. and say that's n over n plus 1 to the 10th power. Whoops, that was supposed to be an absolute value, not a parenthesis. And right, and I know that fraction goes to 1 as n goes to infinity. Okay, But you know this is going to go to 1. That's going to stay at 10. But I'm going to have a 10th of infinity, and that limit is equal to infinity. Okay, And I'm going to say, therefore, the series diverges. And I'm realizing. I didn't conclude over here. What am I doing? Okay, so I'm going to say this series converges absolutely. Because that's less than 1. And I guess because that's greater than 1. I'm not sure if that's important. Um, but Especially for the converging one, I'd say it's less than 1. The series converges absolutely. Right, because if we can show that the series converges using the ratio test, then we know it converges absolutely. OK, what values of x make this series converge? OK, that one, if it's not a geometric series, if it's a geometric series, we can take the, the ratio and set it between negative 1 and 1. But this is not, right? 
uh, down here I multiply by 3 and it looks like each time I'm multiplying by like n plus 1 in their n in the denominator uh, we don't want that okay so it's not going to be a geometric series not that we don't want that but that's not what uh, going to give us a geometric series so I'm going to have to use the ratio test so I'm going to say I'm going to use the ratio test compute the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 divided by a n's absolute value So the n plus first term is x to the n plus 1 divided by n plus 2 factorial divided by the terms of the original, which would be n plus 1 factorial divided by x to the n. Okay, I'm going to need to you know, cancel off some terms. Um, I'll lose all but 1 powers of the x and I'll be left with n plus 2 in the denominator, right? Yeah, because n plus 1 factorial is something that I get. n plus 2 factorial is n plus 2 times n plus 1 times n and so on. And that n plus 1 and n and so on, that can be packaged up as n factorial. So I've got x divided by n plus 2. And we're interested in where that's less than 1. What values of x make that less than 1? But if x is a finite number, positive or negative or whatever, this limit goes to zero because n plus one goes to infinity while x stays constant. Okay, so this is true for all values of x. Okay, um, this is, this is related, this is an exponential function. Okay, I think this is e to the x divided by x minus one over x or e to the x minus 1 all divided by x or something like that. Um, yeah, that's what it is. We should learn about that in the next unit. Okay. Find the radius and interval of convergence for the power series below. Okay, well, we're going to do the ratio test. But I think, ah, whatever, it'll be fine. Um, we'll be able to deal with this, the 2x. Okay, I want the ratio test. The limit is n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 divided by a n's absolute value. Okay, that's going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of, okay, plug in n plus 1 for n, and I get, you know what, I'm going to get rid of the negative 1 to the n's because I'm taking the absolute value, right? Okay, when I plug in n plus 1 for n, n plus 1 minus 1, that leaves me with n. And then divided by a n, these are the terms of a n, divided by 2x to the n. I can cancel some stuff here and say, really, I've got a 2x in the numerator and an n minus 1 over n. So. As n approaches infinity, this fraction approaches 1, and so I'm just left with the absolute value of 2x, which needs to be less than 1. Okay. Now, when I've got, let's see, okay, that's 2x being between negative 1 and 1, I'm not sure, I think I was getting ahead of myself thinking about the endpoints, and we're not even to the interior yet, so how are we going to think about the endpoints before we get the interior? Okay, I'm going to divide both or all three sides by two. Okay, and I'm going to say, okay, that's the interior of my interval. Okay, I know that the radius is equal to a half because it goes to a half that way, a half that way. Okay, so I'm going to say that radius equals one half because it did say find the radius, but the interval to get the full blown interval, I'm going to need to check the endpoints. Okay, so I'm going to check x equals one half. It's going to become the sum from 2 to infinity. When x is 1 half, I've got 1 to the n. That's just 1. So it's to the n over n minus 1. This converges by the alternating series test. And you know how that goes. We, I don't have enough room to say it, but the terms are alternating. They are decreasing in absolute value, and their limit is 0. Therefore, this converges. 
time. But if this was, you know, something I was getting graded on for the quality of my justification, I would definitely include that it converges because it's alternating. The absolute value of the terms is decreasing, and the limit of the terms is zero. Just wanted to emphasize that. Okay, so I know that that's less than or equal to. When uh, wait, no, I just checked the positive half. Pardon me, because I don't think that the same thing is going to happen. I think, yeah, that's here. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen here. I think it's going to be something that I would limit compare against the harmonic. Okay, so the sum from 2 to infinity of negative 1 to the n times negative 1 to the n is positive 1 to the n. Yeah, this actually is the harmonic series, if you think about it. If it starts with um, n equals 2, it would be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 and so on. So this one diverges because it's the harmonic series. Okay, and so that's, that's going to be my full interval of convergence. All right. All right. Power series below has radius of convergence equal to 3. At which of the following x values can the alternating series test be used with this series to verify convergence at x? Well, it's not going to be anything bigger than 6, right? Because if it's bigger than 6, then it's not even an alternating series. Okay. I think it's got to be 5. Because 5 minus 6 is negative 1 to the n. That's a, that's a, um, what am I saying? Negative 1 to the n. Oh, that makes it an alternating series, yeah. So it's going to be this one. What's wrong with 2? 2 minus 6 is negative 4 to the n over 3 to the n. That's, that's going to be too powerful on top. It's going to cause it to diverge. Also, it's outside of the radius of convergence, which means it's going to diverge. And these are even more outside the, the radius of diverge, or radius of convergence. This power series converges conditionally at x equals 1. Okay, this is one of many of this type of uh, multiple choice question that I have seen. Okay, so it's centered if x equals 5, right? Because if x is equal to 5, I'm adding a bunch of zeros, and it obviously converges, right? Because 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0, and so on, and it's going to add up to 0. Okay, converges conditionally at 1. Well, that means that the radius is equal to 4. Okay, so I know, right? So I know it also goes up to 9. But I, okay, I know it converges conditionally here. It could diverge. It could converge conditionally. It could converge absolutely. I, we really don't know what's going to happen over here at 9. Okay, but must be false. No, this is true. There's not enough information about 9. Okay, The series diverges at 0. No, I know the radius is exactly 4, so anything less than 1 is going to be diverging. Anything where x is greater than 9 is diverging. Okay, so converges conditionally at 10. That one must be false. I can see that. Series diverges at 0. Yes, that has to be true. Series converges absolutely at x equals 8. x equals 8 is in the interior of the interval of convergence. And a series converges absolutely on the interior of its interval of convergence. Now, what is the radius of convergence for the power series below? Oh, right. The question is, is it 2, 3, or 4? And I'll tell you, it's going to be 4. But we'll show that using the ratio test. OK, so I'm just expressing interest and in running the ratio test. And that's going to be the limit as n approaches infinity of x minus 2 to the n plus 1 divided by 3 times 4 to the n plus 2 divided by the terms of the original series. And now I'm going to be canceling stuff off. First thing I want to cancel off is this 3. It's not contributing anything, right? I could factor that 1 third out in front, and I just have a third of that sum, which is going to have that. It will be the same. It'll be the same x values make it converge. It's just the total would be a third if I had a third of what it would have been otherwise, you know, because I have that third there. Okay, then I'm going to cancel off, oh, all but one power of that four, of those fours there, and then I'll be left with one power of x minus two. Okay, so that's equal to okay. Wait, 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 wait. There were still is there? No? 
Okay, no, that's it. X minus 2 over 4. And I need that to be less than 1. Okay, so you can, that some people will just define this number as the radius of convergence or get it down to X plus number, X minus number, something less than something else. That's the radius of convergence. Either way, we can see it's going to be 4. But I'm going to practice the algebra all the way through just to make sure that, you know, because this is a thing we have to do pretty regularly in AP calculus. So. Okay, the interior of my interval is, no, pardon me. It's moving too fast right now, I think. The interior of the interval, at the very least, is negative two to six. I'm not gonna go through and investigate what's happening at negative two and at six, but I'm gonna tell you that, hold on, what was I gonna say? Oh, either way, the radius of this is, is four, right? If it's between negative two and six, the center's at two and it goes four in each direction, so that's, Radius equals four again. All right. Now for number eight, I'm going to find the radius and interval of convergence for the power series. Okay, so that's going to be the full blown one. You know what? This is all going to be radius and interval of convergence the rest of the way through the homework. So I'm going to stop this video right here. It's less about the ratio test. And I'll you know label the next video as just interval and radius of convergence practice. So thanks for watching.